Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, let upon you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. We see. to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me, they and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a re rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. In unison, let us read Psalm 123 as found in the bulletin. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, 
and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to you, Lord, our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud.
In the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. <clears throat> I just don't seem to remember attending services on the 4th of July. Perhaps when they occasionally hit that day, I was away at a camp for teaching in Africa. I don't know. I certainly don't remember ever preaching on America's Independence Day. Where does one begin? I suppose we might begin with the beautiful words describing our desire for freedom and independence. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> I remember my pride when I got that memorized, the whole preamble back in eighth grade. And somehow it stuck with me for a number of years until now it's slipping away. I <laughs> don't have it anymore. Now there are churches in our country that will worship these words today. As Christian nationalists, just after and along with the readings of Holy Scripture, and some sermons today may sound like partisan, patriotic speeches. Choirs and congregations will also be singing, God bless America, and the battle hymn of the Republic. You can even go online and hear the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, with their incredible choir singing, Make America Great Again. Make Great America Great Again they sing. So, where is Christ Church Hamilton in all this? Years ago, there came to this church uh, a rector, Father Mark Dyer, a former Catholic monk and professor of ascetic theology. After leaving our church, uh, just after a few years, he became Bishop of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and then a professor at the Virginia Theological Seminary. And he was appointed the very top global Anglican to represent conversations with the patriarch of the Orthodox churches in discussions that would try to bring our churches somewhat closer. Anyway, back then when he first came to this church, as an Episcopal priest, this, uh, it was his first rectorship he had been a spiritual director helping the bishop in Boston. He came to this church on the 4th of July, and outside he found a guard of veterans holding an American flag, which they intended to join the procession after the cross and coming in. It was their custom to do that in uh, local churches back in those days. Sometimes the Christian flag, the American flag would come up and both would be posted and, and so forth. A shocked Father Dyer that day kindly but firmly told them it would be impossible to include the American flag in our worship. So they left the flag outside and politely joined in the worship of the King of Kings. How, how then are we followers of Jesus Christ in this 21st century since our Lord's life? To understand our religious and political lives and responsibilities. What are the duties, what are our duties to the United States of America and what to the kingdom of Jesus Christ our Lord? Can we love both? in different ways. Christian theology of church and state, of Christ and culture, has had quite a history of debate. Christians were a persecuted yet growing minority 
in the first, second, and third centuries, suffering sporadic persecutions from Roman authorities, and you know the stories of the martyrs. <clears throat> then, in the fourth century, Emperor Constantine was himself converted and issued the Edict of Milan, which protected and secured Christians in the Roman Empire. Shortly after, Emperor Theodosius went further and made Christianity the religion of the Roman Empire. Jews and pagans began to suffer, as Christians had before. <clears throat> the Roman Empire, dominated by the church, would further push the Crusades, taking terrible tolls on Muslims, pagans, and Jewish lives. And even in Jerusalem, the Eastern Christians, when they slaughtered everyone in the first crusade, the only successful crusade, and left no one alive. The Protestant Reformation, centuries later, in the 16th and early 17th century, rejected all notions of a holy Roman Catholic empire, but instead supported national church monarchies. The Lutheran Church in Germany and Scandinavia and the Anglican Church in England. Meanwhile, a minority of Christians wanted church and state to be totally separated to the extent that some wanted nothing to do with politics, not to ever become a police person or to, become, uh, to join the military. The Amish are such an example. Then we all know Europe's era of colonization and imperialism, which took the flag and the cross to conquer and convert by force natives in Africa and Latin America. <clears throat> now, coming to our day of independence, our Christian and deistic founders rejected notions of a state religion. Church and state were to be free from each other, separate, so as not to be enmeshed or intertwined, and no one to be forced into religious conversion. Yet a god, some god, the god of nature as we've just heard, acceptable to the broadest populace, was asked to bless our national enterprise. So now we're here as followers and worshipers of Christ the King. We ask about our kingdom, our destiny, and our ultimate allegiance. What has Jesus taught us about the kingdom? The kingdom that he taught back then, which is still meant to be the kingdom for us today. Well, listen to these points, according to Jesus. The kingdom of God is a mystery. The kingdom of God is like a small mustard seed. The kingdom of God is already within you. The kingdom of God is growing among you. The kingdom of God is now realized on earth. It is planted in the hearts of believers and should show forth. Though not yet, Jesus taught us, it will come. And that is why we all pray, thy kingdom come. How then are we to live in these 2020s? A famous letter to Diognetus describes Christians way back before all this in the first and second centuries, long before Constantine. Here's, here's, here's what we find in the letter to Diognetus. Christians are not distinguished from the rest of humanity either in locality or speech or in customs. While they dwell in the cities of Greeks and barbarians, as a lot of each is cast, and follow native customs in dress and food and other arrangements of life, they dwell in their own countries as sojourners. Every foreign country is a fatherland to them, and every fatherland is foreign. Their existence is on earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. They obey established laws, and they surpass the laws in the way they love. 
They love all human beings, even if they're persecuted by all. In a word, what the soul is to the body, this the Christians are to the world. I'm wondering how we are to understand that these days. I think there are among us, I think there have been among us since the founding of this country, a people who have been forced to make this their land, but not their fatherland, not their true place. And that is what we heard in the song, the hymn that we sang as an entrance hymn, one that I love, I've had my classes sing this song, and it's, I've called it the Black National Anthem. But it's not a national anthem, it's a counter anthem. Note the words, stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is one. And then in the last verse, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of this word, world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. So Jesus has asked us to be tasty, healing salt and liberating light in an often dark and tasteless world. More than that, Jesus and Holy Scripture asks us to be witnesses of his kingdom as prophets of his truth, justice, love, and peace to a world entrapped in its own self-centered aspirations. <clears throat> From Ezekiel, we've heard this morning, the Lord saying to the prophet, and to us today, I am sending you to a world of rebels. They have transgressed and are stubborn. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord. What then does our loving Heavenly Father want us to say to our world today, to our country on this Independence Day? Our psalm responds partly to our question. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. And in our gospel reading according to Mark, Jesus comes to his hometown. They've heard reports of all that he's doing. As we've considered in our readings from Mark over the past few weeks, a storm calmed and sailors saved, strange teachings and mysterious parables, a wild man brought back to sanity, a bleeding unclean woman accepted and healed, a 12-year-old child raised from her deathbed. But, Jesus' town folks say, wait a minute, we've watched this kid grow up from his toddler stage, seen him with brothers and sisters, watched him become a carpenter. For years he was making furniture for us until he went off as some kind of a rabbi. There must be some ordinary explanations for those miracles. Then Mark goes on to explain that such stubborn lack of faith hinders Jesus from doing powerful deeds among them. Instead, Jesus moves on to other villages and appoints his disciples to take his call of repentance into other towns. 
The print on our bulletin reminds us that we too are to call our towns and our country to repentance. For the way the lofty ideals in our Declaration of Independence we just heard, for instance, have been often betrayed throughout our history. And that is why on this 4th of July, we will sing from all that terror teaches, from lies of tongue and pen, from all the easy speeches that comfort cruel men, from sale and profanation of honor and the sword, from sleep and damnation, deliver us, good Lord. Tie in a tether the prince and priest and thrall. Bind all our lives together. Smite us and save us all. In ire and exultation, aflame with faith and free, lift up a living nation, a single sword to thee. May this, we pray, in all aspects of our worship today, shape us, the Church of Jesus Christ, into a humble and loving prophetic witness of true life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, attainable only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God the Father, Father of the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and earth of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third, the third day, day he rose, rose again, again in accordance, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand, hand of the Father. He will he come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, his kingdom will have no end. We believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come, let us join together in praising God as we offer our prayers and petitions, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, pour your generosity into our heart that we may reach out to others in love and service, bringing hope to those living with anxiety and despair 
the bread of life that never fails to those who are hungry, lonely, and fearful. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, author of creation, the fruits of the earth are beautiful in our eyes and delight in our taste. Help us to honor what is in your hands have fashioned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, word made flesh, help us to take to, God, to heart God's grace and let us know that it is sufficient for all our endeavor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Redeemer of the world, banish the unclean spirits of this generation, that war and deprivation may cease, and the thought that through the power of your Holy Spirit, the world may receive your unwavering peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Spirit of truth, Help us to see our sins and to dispel their power, that we may turn to your forgiveness and bear witness to your liberating love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all our mercies, your breath animated creation. Bring eternal life to those who now rest in faith, that at the last they may rise into the life immortal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the company of angels, archangels, and all the saints, let us continue our prayers. On this day, remembering those who are desperately ill and failing, those who are just losing their lives, those who have served our country well throughout history. We also ask God that his kingdom may come. As we pray for our government, our president, our Congress, and the Supreme Court. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in <clears throat> thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. <clears throat> Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Okay, a few announcements here that uh, the Accord Food Pantry of Volunteer Opportunity is still looking for some volunteers. So uh, you can check with Michelle H Horgan as you see in your bulletin to uh, know more about that. Another reminder that the Women's Retreat is coming up this summer and is receiving people uh, to uh, sign up through Google. And you can see Carolyn. Do you have a word about it, that, that you? Okay, well. And the uh, Garden Guild is uh, still working and uh, looking for volunteers. Uh, see Abby Butt on, on that. Uh, the men's group uh, could use one or two more men and a neat little group of men that get together uh, to encourage each other, discuss the scriptures. And let's remember to support Family Promise and how you can do that is labeled in here. Now, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. <clears throat> we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. <clears throat> all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. We do not presume to come to this year's table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. In one to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Jesus said, go out into the villages until all are fed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And make the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.